Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at trig identities, which is the next part that we'll investigate. Now, what is an identity really, first of all, before we actually start about trig identities? An identity is going to be an equation such that no matter what you put into the variables, the equation will always be true. Okay, and we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples of some identities that we have up here so that you can get a firm idea of what that refers to. Now, what are these identities actually used for? Generally speaking, the identities are used to simplify trig expressions. So if you ever have an expression, or say for example, one side of an equation, there are oftentimes the need to be able to simplify it or change its form so that you can actually work with it in a productive way. So, let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. Here's an example. Say, for example, you have cosine square root of theta times it by the secant square root of theta minus 1. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and simplify that, is there an easier way for us to actually write that expression? Now, before we actually go ahead and take a look at the two different methods that we have here, let's go ahead and take a look at the six trig functions. Yes, there are six. Okay, we know what cosine and sine are. We know that tangent is going to be sine over cosine. Now the other three that you have are more or less the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. And they are called as such. SEC with the theta mark next to it is called the secant theta, and that is the reciprocal of the cosine theta. CSC theta is the cosecant of theta, and that is the same thing as the reciprocal of the sine theta. Cotangent, or COT theta, is the reciprocal of the tangent theta, and therefore you have the cosine theta over sine theta. So, these are the definitions that we have based upon uh, the three trig functions that we had. Right? So that's something, uh, that's not necessarily something that's new. But this one is. So is this one. And so is this one. So those are going to be three additional definitions of the trig fun three additional trig functions that we have that you need to recognize. And we will be using to again simplify trig expressions. But these are not these are not identities, those are definitions. Okay? These are identities here. So the Pythagorean trig identity, which all of you know right now, to be sine squared plus cosine squared theta, that is always equal to 1, because we said that it's based upon the unit circle. And being that this is always going to be the case for any particular value of theta that you choose, we know that this is going to be considered an identity. And so in other words, we could always go ahead and call one this, or we could always call this one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're equivalent. Now, there's two other trig uh, Pythagorean identities that you want, Pythagorean identities that we need to know. And it's very simply determined or derived just by either dividing both sides of the equation, this original equation that we have here, by sine squared theta or cosine squared theta. Now, if I divide everything by sine squared theta on both the left and the right hand sides here, I come up with 1 plus the cotan squared theta is equal to the cosecant squared theta. Or, if I divide both sides by the cosine squared theta, I come up with tan squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. Okay, so what we have now is we have some definitions. We also have some very, very important identities that we have here, here, and here. And now what we want to do is we want to focus on using those and all like particular versions of these to be able to simplify trig expressions. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first first method that we have. And the one thing before we actually get to that, sorry, is that there are going to be so many different methods by which you can actually determine a simplified form. So there's never going to be, well, I shouldn't say never, but there are generally going to be more than one way to actually do this. So it's going to be very important for us as we look through this particular section in simplifying trig expressions, how we can do a simplification in more than one way. And the more ways that you can do it, a particular simplification, then the better you're going to be in terms of recognizing how to use all the different identities that you have. So let's just take a look at method number one. 
Method number one actually uses one of the definitions here. Now we said that this is going to be the secant squared of theta. Well, the secant squared of theta is the same thing as one over cosine squared of theta. So I just substituted that to that. I distributed here and notice that what I come out with, I come out with one minus the cosine squared of theta. Now, how in the world am I getting sine squared theta? Well, I'm going to be using this identity here because if I subtract the cosine from both sides, then what I come out with is the sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared theta. So therefore, the 1 minus the cosine squared theta is equal to the sine squared theta. So notice, this particular more complicated looking expression can be simplified to that. Now, we again mentioned that there are going to be other ways that you can do the same problem, and let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. In this case, I'm coming out with secant squared theta minus 1 is actually going to be equal to the tangent squared theta. Now, how am I getting that? Well, the way that I'm getting that is I'm taking a look at this particular identity here and saying that, well, if this is the secant squared minus 1, if I subtracted 1 from both sides, then I come up with the tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. Therefore, that becomes the tan squared theta. Then I'm using the definition of the tangent, which of theta, which is sine over cosine. If I square both sides, then that means that that's sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And now if I go ahead and multiply those two together, the common factors will cancel, and I'm left again with sine squared theta. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and wrap things up then. Trig identities are basically going to be used to simplify trig expressions or sides of trigonometric uh, equations. And what's going to happen then is that there's going to be oftentimes more than one method by which we can do this, which is going to make it very important that we share our different methods with each other. Once we go ahead and determine the methods, the methods are all based upon the definitions that you have for the six trig functions and also the Pythagorean trig identities that we have, and there are three of them. Now, one of the other things that I want to go ahead and mention as well in terms of simplifying, and I'll end with this, in terms of simplifying trig expressions, notice that everything here, in terms of especially these definitions, which are then of course built in here, all of them are built, or all of them are based on sine and cosine. So in the end, if we can somehow get it to the point where we get everything in terms of sine and cosine, we then might be able to actually find some cancellations and therefore some simplifications. Okay. So, there you go. We'll take a look at some trig identity problems in class together, and we'll see if we can communicate with each other very well how to look at particular simplifications in different methods. Okay? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.